Someone left a question in the comments on one of my YouTube videos and he said that he's got a large part and I guess it's fixtured somewhere on his uh, base plate here and he's got to mark one side of it and then he's got to flip it over and mark the opposite side of it. And what he's doing currently is he's got two separate files because he didn't want to overlap the graphics on the screen for on his workspace in EasyCAD. So what he's doing is loading one file, marking it, flipping his part, loading the other file, and marking the opposite side. And he wants to know if there's a more efficient way to do that. I came up with a couple different ways. One would be the uh, simplest way to do it. Let's say we have the front of the part, we have a piece of text, let's call it front. Let's apply that hatchet so we can see it and say OK. And then let's add one more piece of text. We can just copy this one and we'll call it back. So what you could do, let's say we're marking right at the center, so we'll just put the thing at the origin, both of them, and you have these two objects here. So this one is the front, this one is the back. So what you would do is just click the object in the object list, even though they're overlapping because they're gonna be in the same position on your part, on the front of the part and on the back of the part. And then you would immediately go down to the back and then click mark again. So a little bit clumsy, not the best solution, but that's one solution. So another solution is to use the time-lapse feature. So you can see this little clock over here on the left side of the screen. What I can do is click that, and that's going to add a little timer into the object list. You can see it says 10 milliseconds. Let's change that to, I don't know, 3,000. Let's click Apply, and then let's put that right between our two text objects. So what it would do, if we select all three of these in the object list, make sure you do that in the object list, not on the screen, is it would mark the first text object, that would be the front, and then it would wait 3,000 milliseconds, and then it would mark the back text object. So let's do that right now and see how it looks. This is just a sacrificial piece of anodized aluminum. Let's light it up to see how it's looking. There you go, front, back. Let's stop, and let's press mark. So that was our front and you can see the marking is still on the screen it waited and it marked the back so that's one way to do it probably not the safest way if you're shoving your hand in here and you know playing around with things while the laser is just timing itself it may or may not be fast enough and if you're doing an expensive part that's probably not what you want to do but it is an option and it's pretty easy to set up as you can see so let's try something else let's get rid of our timer and let's use this little traffic light for an input output so what this is going to do is it's going to set up the exact same way. Let's put it between our two objects. And you can see we have all of these conditional controls. So these are the three boxes you can have. Nothing in the box. You can have a black check mark in the box or you can have a grayed out box. Nothing in the box means it's looking for a low voltage input. This means it's looking for a high level input. And this means it's gonna skip the control altogether. So what I did let's change these all back to gray for the moment, is I went to the parameters and I went to this other tab, sorry, port tab, and I saw that my start mark IO input was number 15. So I think that's gonna be my foot pedal. So let's cancel that with that, with knowing that it's gonna be 15. And let's go to number 15 and let's just change it to a low. And this last box here is just a message. So after you hit your mark, it's going to tell you to do something. So let's say hit foot pedal to mark back. Let's apply that. So now in theory, what we should do here is select all objects on the object list. This is our front mark. This is our IO input waiting for the foot pedal to be pressed. And this is our back mark. They're all in the same file, not too complex. Now these could be overlapping, these don't have to be, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just keep them looking like this. Let's move our sacrificial piece of aluminum a little bit. We press light, so eventually that's what it's gonna look like. Let's stop that, and let's click the mark button. So we marked the front word, and now it's sitting here waiting. I press the foot pedal, and it marks again. But we didn't get our message. I think we should have had a message there. I'm not sure why that didn't come up. Okay, so the last method we have of marking a part while giving us a pause in between to do two different pieces of art is to separate our files. So let's say we have an elaborate file that we don't have something, you know, we don't want to overlap our files for whatever reason. Or maybe we have six different files. 
Well, in this case, I'm going to use something really simple. It's going to be the word front. We can light that up. You can see where that's showing up right there. And let's open the second file just so you can see it. It's the word back right below it just for the sake of simplicity so we can see them both and see that they're marking separately. Light that up. Nope, oh, I need to highlight it. Light that up. Okay, nothing special in the file. You can see that's the only thing in the object list. But what we're going to do is go to this laser menu at the top. We're going to go to multi-file mark and it gives us this screen where we can add files to this window on the left. So what we're going to do is add both of those files, our front file and our back file. So let's click on this little two arrow button. That's our front file. And the conditional control in this case, for whatever reason, I don't understand it enough to know why, but it has to be the black check mark. So looking for a high level input, we're going to mark that once. So let's say, okay, then let's add the back file as well. There's the back file, same thing. And let's change the mark count to one and let's say, okay. So you can save this little setup if you have a bunch of files in here and you don't want to set it up twice. You can just click save and it'll save as an MF, I believe an MFD file. Um, I'm going to check the continuous box so it goes through the entire list of files we have set here. And it'll give you a preview of the what you're going to mark, but it doesn't tell you necessarily the position of things. So you have to have that set up between the multiple files. So what I'm going to do now is just select the first one. I'm going to hit the foot pedal and see if anything happens. Nothing did. I'm going to click the mark button and see if something happens. Okay, so it says waiting for an I.O. signal, so that means foot pedal. So I hit the foot pedal, we got our front, and now it should be waiting. Let's hit the foot pedal again, and we got our back. Now we should be able to continue hitting the foot pedal. Let's say we're loading another part. We'll just shift our position a little bit. I think we're still in the vicinity of our material. So it's hard to read, but I think that says front and that says back. So basically you can just keep hitting the foot pedal, keep marking your files in sequence and you'll have time to swap something, flip something over and you can just keep pressing just like that. So make sure you have this continuous box checked. That's the only thing that's letting you cycle through these files and that's basically how you set it up. So if anybody has any questions, comments, or improvements, or further explanation for me, I'd like to learn more about this as well because it's pretty new to me, then feel free to let me know.